Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel for another deep dive. This time we're going to be looking at some recent crime stories from both the UK and the US. And you know, these aren't just your average headlines. We're going to be digging a bit deeper to see what they might tell us about human behavior, the justice system, and how these events affect people's lives. It's amazing how crime, something usually seen as negative, can actually give us some valuable insights into society. Right. Okay, so let's jump into our first story. This one's got all audacity, a bit of history, and a whole lot of social media drama. It's the story of George Whitaker, the guy who was jailed for stealing three million pounds worth of Viking treasure. Then he mocks the police on social media for using a mugshot of him looking, well, hungover in their wanted appeal. It really is a fascinating case because it brings up a lot of questions about how different countries deal with treasure trove laws, which, as you can imagine, can get pretty complicated. In the UK, where this all happened, there were really strict rules about what happens when you find historical artifacts and, more importantly, who gets to own them. Whitaker didn't declare the coins, jewelry, and silver he dug up, and that landed him in some serious legal trouble. And then, get this, he goes on social media and basically taunts the police. He's arguing he didn't do anything wrong because the treasure was buried for 1,500 years, so no one could say it was lost or stolen. Yeah. He even compares his sentence to those given to rapists. His comments are definitely thought-provoking. Do you think he really understands what he did, both legally and ethically? Because besides the legal stuff, there's also this bigger ethical question. Should anyone profit from historical artifacts that are so culturally and historically important? Yeah, it's a tough one, isn't it? It makes you wonder what was going through his mind when he did all this. Was it arrogance? Did he truly think he was in the right? Or was he just trying to get attention? It would be interesting to hear what you all think about Whitaker's actions. Let us know in the comments. But let's move on to a story that's a lot darker one that I think really highlights how important it is to be safe and aware, especially online. This one is about Stephen Matthews, a cardiologist in Colorado who was sentenced to 158 years for drugging and raping at least nine women he met on dating apps. This case is a stark reminder of how real the threat of drug-facilitated sexual assault is. Sadly, it's a crime that often doesn't get reported and can be really hard to prosecute. Matthews' actions were incredibly calculated. He was using these dating apps to find women, invite them back to his place, and then drug and assault them. It's truly awful. A lot of the women who came forward said that Matthews would meet them at bars or somewhere close by and then invite them back to his house where he'd give them drinks that, surprise, surprise, were spiked with drugs. When you hear their stories, it's chilling how similar they all are, showing this disturbing pattern of abuse. It's also incredibly disheartening to hear that some of the victims were hesitant to report what happened because they were scared no one would believe them. I think it really shows how crucial it is to support survivors and believe their stories, especially when they're trying to seek justice, which, as we know, can be a really long and difficult process. You're absolutely right. This story really underscores the fact that these kinds of predators can be found in seemingly ordinary places, even in professions that we usually associate with trust and respect. If any of you watching have experienced something similar, please know that you are not alone and there are resources out there to help. And if you find these deep dives into these real-life events helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel. We're dedicated to bringing you more stories like this, breaking them down, and having these important conversations. Okay, moving on, let's take a look at a couple of cases that raise some serious questions about how our justice system works. These next two cases really force us to look at how effective and how timely our legal processes are, particularly when it comes to sexual assault cases. Yeah, for sure. The first story takes us to Ireland, where a 19-year-old man named Aaron Bride tragically died from a heart attack before the men accused of raping him could be brought to trial. It's just heartbreaking on so many levels. Not only was Aaron allegedly sexually assaulted, but his family was then left trying to navigate this incredibly slow legal system. To make matters worse, after he died, the charges were dropped. Aaron's family has been really vocal about their frustration with the whole situation, arguing that the delays in the legal proceedings really robbed Aaron of the justice he deserved. They feel that the accused, who were out on bail, should have faced trial much sooner. And you can understand why they feel that way. The delays in cases like this are incredibly difficult for both the victims and their families. It just prolongs the trauma, adds more uncertainty to an already awful situation, and could even impact evidence or the availability of witnesses. And the details of this case are just devastating. According to the court, Aaron was separated from his friends while out in Dublin. That's when he was allegedly attacked by two men in an alley. 
Reportedly, the whole incident was captured on CCTV, and there's even smartphone footage of it. But even with that evidence, after Aaron passed away, the prosecution decided not to move forward with the case. Their reasoning was that the defense would likely challenge the CCTV footage and any statements Aaron made because he couldn't be cross-examined anymore. And of course, this decision caused a lot of debate. Does our legal system truly put the needs of the victims first, especially when the victim is no longer alive? Hmm. Some people argue that justice should be pursued regardless of whether the victim can testify, while others emphasize the importance of due process and a fair trial for the accused. It's a complex issue for sure. Absolutely. This case really underscores the need to find a balance between seeking justice for victims while also ensuring that everyone involved gets a fair legal process. It also reveals just how emotionally taxing these cases can be for the families. Right. Aaron's family has said they feel let down by the system, that the delays and the final outcome denied Aaron closure and the chance to really move on with his life. It really highlights the need for a legal system that's not only efficient, but also compassionate and truly responsive to the needs of the victims and their families. It's a sobering reminder that while legal proceedings are definitely necessary, they don't always lead to healing and closure, which are things that people who've been through these crimes really need. Unfortunately, that's true. These cases show us that justice isn't just about the legal stuff. It's also about acknowledging the human impact of these crimes and trying to create a system that really supports the victims, holds the people who committed the crimes accountable, and works to prevent these things from happening again. And on that note, speaking of horrific crimes and the fight for justice, our next story takes us to Scotland. Two men were given life sentences for drugging, raping, and murdering a young father named Callum Simpson. This one is particularly disturbing just because of the level of premeditation and the cruelty involved. The two perpetrators, Dylan Brister and Cameron Allen, deliberately spiked Callum's drinks with etazilam, which is a really strong sedative that's sometimes called street valium. And what makes this even more tragic is that Callum's third child was born just 11 days after he was killed. It's just another layer of heartbreak in this already awful story. Callum's partner, Bobby Cowan, has been incredibly brave in speaking out about the family's ongoing pain and how no sentence will ever truly make up for what they've lost. And the details that came out during the trial were just chilling. They really revealed just how twisted the motives of the perpetrators were. Reports suggest they were using gay dating apps to try and lure men to their flat for some really disturbing reasons. When that didn't work, they turned their attention to Callum, who was just a stranger who happened to be at their flat with a friend. And that just underscores the point that predators can target anyone, regardless of sexual orientation. Yeah. It's another reminder that we need to be careful and aware, especially when we're in social situations where alcohol or drugs are involved. The fact that they recorded the assault on Callum's own phone is just. It shows how little they cared about his life and his dignity. They treated him like an object to fulfill their own sick desires. It's just sickening. The judge in the case didn't hold back either. He called their actions depraved and talked about the terrible devastation they caused Caleb's family and children. And the sentences they received reflect how serious their crimes were. Brister will be in prison for at least 23 years before he can even be considered for parole, and Allen will be behind bars for at least 19 years. But even with those long sentences, the pain their actions caused will likely stay with Caleb's loved ones forever. And I think this case, like the others we've talked about today, serves as a really harsh reminder about the lasting impact of violence and how those effects ripple outward, reaching far beyond just the immediate victim. It raises a lot of really important questions about how we as a society view sexual assault, about the increasing number of deaths related to drugs, and about how we sentence people for these truly horrible crimes. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on all of this? Leave a comment down below. We'd really love to hear your perspectives. And remember, this is a conversation that doesn't end here. We really encourage you to keep looking into these topics, maybe read articles from reputable sources, consider different viewpoints, and think about how we, both individually and as a society, can work towards creating a safer and more just world. It's a really tough situation, and it makes you think about how the system can do better for victims and their families. But, you know, those cases we just talked about focused on how the justice system sometimes doesn't work the way it should. But this next story is kind of different. It shows how a confession can actually lead to someone getting caught, but in a way you'd never expect. This one is a wild ride, that's for sure. It's got shock, a bit of relief, and maybe even some dark humor all mixed together. Oh. I'm intrigued. Tell me more. All right, so picture this. You're on a blind date. And not just any blind date. 
one that your brother set you up on. Seems pretty harmless, right? Well, for a woman named Janie Voyek, this date turned into something straight out of a true crime documentary. Wait a minute. Her own brother set her up with someone who turned out to be a wanted murderer. That's some seriously bad luck with matchmaking. <laughs> I know, right? But it gets even crazier. During the date, the guy who called himself James Kulak just comes out and confesses to murdering his own brother two years ago. Whoa, 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 hold on. Are you serious? That's intense. He supposedly was drunk when he said it, but still, talk about a mood killer. I can't even imagine what was going through her head. Her gut instinct must have been screaming at her to run. Absolutely. She was terrified and hung up the phone immediately. Then she called her brother, and guess what? He had gotten the same confession from Kulak earlier that day. No way, you can't make this stuff up. So they both reported it to the police, and thankfully, they were able to arrest Kulak. What are the chances? That is seriously like something you'd see in a movie. But it also shows you how important it is to trust your gut and do something if something feels seriously off. Totally. Yeah. And it also reminds us that looks can be deceiving. Apparently, Kulak, whose real name turned out to be Kevin, was described as being really charming and charismatic. But underneath all that was a dangerous guy who was wanted for murder in Houston. The police think he shot and killed his brother back in 2022. Wow, that just brings us right back to the whole idea of deception, right? How many people do we meet who are putting on an act, hiding who they really are? Kind of makes you think. Yeah, it's a little unsettling when you think about it that way. But that's why I think these stories are so important to talk about. They remind us to be careful, trust our instincts, and never be afraid to say something if we think something's wrong. You know, it's kind of interesting, though. Even though we're talking about all these intense crime stories, there's something about them that I find strangely connecting. Really? What do you mean? I don't know. It's like we're all here huh. listening to these true crime stories together, and it sparks this shared feeling of curiosity. Like... We all want to understand the darker side of humanity. I see what you mean. It's like this collective, oh my gosh, and then we all want to dig deeper, analyze it, and maybe even find some kind of meaning in all of it. Mm -hmm. And I think you're right about feeling connected. True crime often explores the things that make us human, things like love, betrayal, greed, jealousy, the desire for justice. Yeah, exactly. It's like, yes, these stories can be dark and disturbing, but they also show us that we're not alone in experiencing these really intense human emotions, even the ones that make us feel uncomfortable. And by talking about it, sharing our thoughts and reactions, we're acknowledging that complexity, aren't we? It's like saying, hey, this stuff happens and it's messy and it makes us think and it's OK to talk about it. Right. And who knows? Maybe having these conversations can lead to positive change. Maybe someone listening realizes they're in a bad situation right. or learns about resources they didn't know about. Or maybe they feel a little less alone knowing that bad things happen, but they're not the only one going through it. I think that's a really important point. When we approach it thoughtfully, True crime can be a way to raise awareness and even empower people. I completely agree. And hey, if you're liking this deep dive into the darker side of things, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We're always exploring new stories and trying to make sense of the world around us. If you're enjoying this deep dive with us, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and join our community. But before we sign off, I wanted to leave you all with something to think about, something that's been on my mind throughout these stories. I always love a good thought-provoking question. Lay it on me. Okay, so we've covered some pretty heavy stuff today. We've talked about theft, assault, murder, cases that show us the darker side of what people are capable of. So here's my question. After hearing all of this, do you feel more or less safe in the world? That is a great question. It makes you really think about how these stories affect the way we see the world. Do we become more cautious, more aware of the bad things that could happen? Or maybe, and this might sound strange, do they actually make us feel more connected to other people, realizing that we're all in this together and that there's still good in the world? I'm really interested to hear what our viewers think. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Your perspectives add so much to the conversation, and they help us shape what we cover in future deep dives. And even though we've been talking about some pretty dark topics, it's important to remember that there's always hope. There are people out there doing good things, showing courage and kindness, and trying to make the world a better place. That's a perfect way to wrap things up. Thank you all so much for joining us on this deep dive. Until next time, stay curious, stay informed, and stay safe. And don't forget if you found this video thought-provoking, give it a like and share it with your friends. And of course, Make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any more deep dives into the stories that matter 